This is a story about the time I nearly died on Mount Kilimanjaro. A seemingly innocuous trip, which thousands attempt each year, can turn bad very quickly because of a lethal brain swelling called HACE. If you haven't watched my video explaining in simple terms how HACE works, please go and watch this here. I was the trip's doctor and I was kept busy with lots of mountain sickness, mainly involving vomit. Prior to summit night, we'd been climbing for 8 to 12 hours each day for three days. After which you're told, go to sleep at 7, only to wake up again at 11.30pm and climb to the summit in the dark with no sleep. This is arguably one of the worst nights of my life, made worse by all of the extra bits to come. This is me and I'm at the bottom of Mount Kilimanjaro and this is the summit. Okay look I get it, it's not Mount Kilimanjaro but it's a great shot and it shows the point well. So the first part of Kilimanjaro is pretty easy. We went up in four days, four and a half days, down in two and a half. I'm going to show you what that looked like. This is actually kind of what I looked like on Kilimanjaro too. First half of Kilimanjaro looks a little something like this. It's basically backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. I'm going to show you what that looked like. did that a little bit too quickly because realistically you walk at this pace. I'd like to point out that that is not an exaggeration. It's almost like a funeral march to your death. Let me show you some footage of what that looks like right here because I'm not exaggerating. It is literally that slow. I also forgot to mention that I kind of almost died. Now I didn't almost die in terms of risk, but I developed a lethal condition. As a doctor, it was quite worrying. <laughs> we need to get wait until we get to 4,000 meters before we start discussing that. Climbing in the dark for seven hours is disorientating to say the least. It's so, so cold and slightly scary. It's what I think it might be like being in a deprivation chamber or being lost in outer space. The word torture crossed my mind several times as I prayed for the sunrise and as the sun lit up all of the life on Kilimanjaro. The sun also ignited something very dangerous for me, my bowels. OMG, I literally have to tell you this before we leave. Okay, part of mountain sickness is that you get diarrhea, severe diarrhea, like it would not stop coming out of me. So I pooed, I only started like the diarrhea on the summit night. So I probably pooed about here, here, here. Here, 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 and then I came back down. There's a lot of shit on the side of Kilimanjaro. Despite being very inconvenient, your body is actually doing something very clever. As an attempt to get rid of water so that it can make your blood thicker and more concentrated, you end up developing diarrhea and weeing a lot. By doing this, your body can carry a higher percentage of oxygen per volume of blood. Despite all of this, there's one thing that you should know about me. I may not be the fittest, I may not be the most athletic, but boy, am I very stubborn. And I was not going to let this mountain defeat me easily. The end is nearly in sight, but at this point, movement becomes seemingly impossible. I am not kidding when I say I take about two steps and I have to stop. So what is about 200 metres in distance takes about two or three hours. I've never been in so much pain from so little movement. It was like in two steps, I was running a 400 meter sprint. And annoyingly, every time I stopped, I felt better and my mind reset. And after thinking, no, I can't do this, I would think, come on Dawn, you've got this. This carried on for two hours, by which point it was 9 a.m. I'd like to summarize those nine hours. I'd cried twice, seen squirrels in my peripheral vision, and was being force-fed Snickers bars and water whilst falling asleep to my death on the side of a mountain. I was also developing meningism, commonly associated with meningitis, where your brain is so swollen that it pushes against its outer sac, the meninges, causing headaches and neck stiffness. As the pain continued, I broke into tears once again. I 
literally begged for the SATS monitor, which measures your oxygen saturations and your heart rate. And worryingly at rest, my oxygen levels were 52%, they should be above 95, and my heart rate was 120. Now, what was tough for me to determine at this point was whether I was being mentally weak or whether I was actually dying. I decided after nine hours of walking in the dark, 20 Aww. toilet trips, four Snickers bars, basically developing hypothermia, treating someone for back pain and sending them down off the side of the mountain, two emotional breakdowns, and dangerously concerning observations that would land me in ICU if I were in hospital in the UK, that I was the latter. I was the doctor, I wanted to set an example, and I wasn't much use if I was unconscious or dead. After I read those levels, I said, I'm going back down, I can't, I literally can't carry on. I had 200 metres to go, 160 metres even, but I physically could not do it. I have never really given up in my life, so that was really hard for me, and I felt so underaccomplished. but I thought, what kind of doctor am I if I don't set an example of looking after yourself and also if I'm unconscious? I'm not very useful, am I? So anyway, I literally got physically carried down because I was whimpering, I couldn't use my body, I've never been such a pathetic state of a mess in my life. I was like, <sighs> It was so bad. I gave myself some dexamethasone, which is one of the emergency treatments for it. I gave it myself orally. I should have had it IV really, but you know, the descent is the most important part of the treatment. If you can descend quickly, that is the ultimate treatment, but it's always a benefit when you can reduce some of the inflammation that's going on in your body. Really the only thing that saved me were the amazing guides who carried me down because if I were on my own I'd probably have fallen asleep to my death on that mountain. Kilimanjaro would have claimed another soul. <laughs> How did this start? I'm not sure, I was sleeping in my tent and then it, and then it, all, it all kicked off. I help you. So move there. Go there, go there. Go there. Go to dance. Yeah, slowly, slowly, not fast. Like shit.